Watching. Finding. Yep. We're live. You know what? We're live. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, you've reached Gloria Horn Sewing Studio here on Tuesday afternoon. It's Technique Tuesday. Yes. And uh, what, did you, what did you say? We're what? not. Uh, uh, we're I'm, not. Yeah, obviously, we're not Joni and Gloria. I'm not Gloria, and Ruth Ann is not, not Joni. Joni. So. so, and we're going to do the best we can with the, because you know I do my machine applique. I don't do the embroidery in the hoop, and I don't think Steve has done many. He's watched no, Gloria, uh -uh. so we're going to take a stab at it. And we have Tommy in the back that's going to cue us in on anything that we're doing wrong or not doing. So it's so. Technique Tuesday here at Gloria Horn Sewing Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, today we are working on uh, Wander Lane series, and this is Loveland Cottage. So this is the, the, the February design, the Valentine's Day design. And um, Ruth Ann, why don't you show your hold your block up there? Okay. For if uh, PJ can get it, you can leave it right down there. Last, last, yeah. where, right, right here. Right there yeah. on our table. Somewhere. Last week, Gloria was on, on the show, and she said, Oh, next Tuesday, it'll be Steve and Ruth Ann. I said, oh, okay. Yes. Too bad, I already had it all applique. So I brought a sample to applique is, for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ruth Ann does it the traditional way of um, cutting out the pieces and laying the pieces down and appliquing around mm -hmm. them by hand sewing with that blanket stitch. And uh, she's going to show you a, a portion of that today. Uh, and Tommy has digitized these for us, as you guys all know. So uh, we, we can uh, do it in the embroidery machine too. Um, so we're going to set it up to do in the uh, Meridian how to do the lay down your background fabrics and get everything going uh, to get you started here. So. And the first thing I'm going to do is take these three pieces. They're the background for the, for the block. And I'm going to piece B and C together. And then we'll press it. Steve has the iron hot. And then I'll, I'll add A on top. And then this will be Steve's background to do his um, machine embroidery. OK? So Ruth is going to sew those together for us. And then I thought I would just. Uh, go through and show you the different projects that come in this uh, design series. So we could put that in the bubble in case anyone hasn't gotten their uh, embroidered design sets yet. Do we have one? Perfect. So with the embroidered design set, this is what you'll get: is you'll get the, the book from Nancy Halverson. You'll get the embroidered designs that. Um, Tommy has digitized for us in, uh, an instruction book for the embroidery. So what's in here? Um... So in, in the instruction booklet, it will actually tell you all the different sizes of the designs. Um, we had a book open here somewhere, and it's gone missing, but we have another one right here. Uh, different book, but we could just, let's just open this one. Yeah, that's good. So for the main block, which is the Loveland Cottage block. There's going to be two different size designs. Uh, one fitting in the 10 and a half by 16 hoop, or 10 and 5 eighths by 16 hoop. And then a design that fits in the 9 and a half by 14 hoop. Today we're going to be working on the 9 and a half by 14 size, because we're going to be on the, uh, the Meridian 2. Uh, Ruth Ann is going to be sewing on the Solaris, so uh, we're going to be doing the slightly smaller size, but this is the, the center block that we're working on. Um, the embroidery design also comes with these, uh, what do they call these, cheater blocks? I call them cheater blocks. Cheater blocks. Um, that's the only name I could think of. I don't they, know. They were they originally kind of supposed it, it, to be uh, piece blocks, like quilt piecing, yeah. um, but they're, they are definitely, it's, it's, it's an easier way to do this if you have an embroidery machine and trying to piece all these pieces together, and then they turn out perfectly for you. So. Well, if you buy fabric printed that looks like a quilt block, they call that a cheater block. Yeah. So I guess yep. it's the so same yeah, thing. It's, I guess it's essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other projects that come in the design set are this. You uh, and me. You and me. And you and me comes in, let's see how many sizes. Three different sizes. Uh, t there's a 10 inch by 10 inch, uh, 7 inch by 7 inch and like a nine and a half by nine inch. What size is this one? This, this one, big, this one's the biggest one. Biggest this one. is the 10 by 10. Um, yeah, I, I believe you could do that in a 10 by 10 hoop. And then there's two of the cheater blocks on here. And then this one, uh, we just followed up at Nancy Halverson's pictures and picked the same fabrics that she did. Uh, there's some other ones in here. So this is the, uh, you melt my heart. So it's the ice cream cones. Melt My Heart is on page nine, and it comes in three different sizes as well. The Owls, I've seen a lot of you guys post this on uh, our Facebook group. 
uh, the owls you guys have been working on. They yes. turned out really, really good. This cute. is this is definitely a cute one. Very cute. And they even, they even used um, metallic gold thread for the little uh, feet and the beak there on this one. And I, you know, I love I love to see brown and pink together. If you made mm -hmm. those owls in shades of brown and these in shades of pink, I think that'd be really cute. Mm -hmm. You can use your own fabric. Yeah, too. I've seen a lot of people on our Facebook group uh, post different fabrics, and it's looking really mm -hmm. cool. So keep it up. Keep posting to our uh, Facebook group. Um, so this owl design, I believe, three different designs or three different size designs for the owl. It's called "I'll Always Love You." Aww. I love the play on words. <laughs> owl always yeah, she love got creative. She was yeah. creative with it for mm -hmm. sure. And, and you melt my heart was cute too. Yep, you melt my heart. Let's see how many sizes. Four different sizes for the I'll Always Love You. It's kind of like a tongue twister. It's mm -hmm. hard to yeah. say. I'll Always Love You. Um, it's a 10 and a half by 10 and a half, 8 and a half by 8 and a half, 5 and a half by 5 and a half, and a 6 and a half by 6 and a half. 5 and a half by 5 and a half. You could make like a little mug yeah. out of that. that was mm -hmm. a, so fit in a 6 by 6 hoop, you mm -hmm. got to be under 6 inches. It's not truly a 6 inch hoop, so it has to be under. So, mm -hmm. And then love. I think it, I just, we just called it love. The love placemat or love, it's just called love. Yeah. And love <laughs> comes in three different sizes, uh, nine inch by nine inch, uh, seven and a half by seven and a half, and about a five and a half by five and a half. Very cute. So you could you could applique around all those, like and then, like Ruth Ann, but uh, the embroidery just, it, it takes us to Another level. It, another and level, and it gives yeah. it a sheen. It gives it a nice little sheen. I use the embroidery thread even for my blanket stitch, mm -hmm. and yeah. it gives it at least just a nice little sparkle. Yeah, I like both versions of it. Like mm -hmm. those, I, I can't, I can't do uh, applique like you, Ruthann. Well, but it takes yeah, practice. It takes practice, right? I'm, I'm too. Been, I'm, been, I'm old. I've been I'm, doing it for a long yeah, time. <laughs> I'm too impatient to to learn that, but mm -hmm. I think it looks really good whenever uh, someone does a sewing applique. Mm -hmm. So what's our first step to get started? Where were we? The hoop. The the hoop. Who's, who's starting? Okay. We're going to start with gonna, embroidery. So we'll come over it, it'll, here. It'll stitch on the stabilizer to show you where to lay this down. Okay. Are we, are we all set with uh, our software and everything I'm going to show where to put it here. Oh, we have pink thread. Okay, I was just yep. going to say put a color thread in. Okay. So this is our Meridian 2. It goes up to a 9.5 by 14 hoop. Um, this is a, a, one of the newer machines that came out that with the upgrade, um, but it's an embroidery only machine. So if you're looking for another machine just to do some embroidery on, you don't need the sewing part, just to run two machines at a time, the Meridian 2 is a really great option because it has all those features that we like, plus a nice size hoop. So um, um, we have our design stick in here um, with our USB with all the designs on it. So I'm just going to go into embroidery. And then it's in the, there's two USB slots on the side here, so it's in the top one. So I'm going to go to this USB drive. It pulls up our Loveland Cottage, so you're going to tap on Loveland Cottage. This machine reads our PES format best, so I'm going to choose PES. The main block we're doing is the Loveland Cottage block, so that's what we're going to choose here. And then you'll see two different sizes on the machine, and I can tell that the one on the right here is just slightly smaller than the one on the left, so this is the one that's going to fit in this hoop, so I'm going to tap there. And it shows uh, 12 and a half by, by 9 and a third there is what the size of this hoop is, I mean this design is, so I'm going to go hit set. And it shows us our design on our edit screen. We don't need to edit anything with this design, so we can go right to embroidery. Now from here, under the word layout, it's just showing us what it's going to stitch out first for our placement line. So we're going to go ahead and sew that first. I have just um, like a light pink exquisite thread threaded in the top, just our white embroidery thread in the bobbin. So we'll go ahead and uh, stitch this part out. In the hoop, there is medium weight tearaway. And then shape flex, shape flex SF101, that interfacing that you iron to the back to the to the back of the fabrics. This is hooped in the hoop with the adhesive size up. So the scratchy side is up, the softer side is down, and that's what's hooped up. So medium weight tear away, and then your shape flex uh, SF101. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch this part out. When we do embroidery, our go-to needle is that 90 by uh, 90 by 14 uh, embroidery needle uh, to go through these different layers and things. So it's just doing the little hash marks where to line up the background fabrics for us. And Steve, why do you use pink? So you can see it, but it's not so dark that it'll show through later. Is that yes, it? Yes, that's. I think that's why we use the pink. Mm -hmm. You want to use something that you can see when you're trimming around your fabrics to do these appliques, because you put down all the appliques first. And then you'd go back and do the satin stitches at the, at the very end. So 
to cut that stabilizer a little big. <laughs> well, we originally had it hooped up for the largest hoop for the for the Slayers, but it's easier for Ruth Ann to, to sit and sew rather than to try to stand and sew. Well, and, so and, we're and gonna... the Meridian people like to see that like to see it done on their machine once in a while too. Yeah. Do we need to tell people how to register? Oh gosh, yeah, I didn't do any of that. So if, if you're new here, if you're new here and you're on Facebook, just if you're on Facebook and you're new, you need to register. And you can do that by going to the comment bar and typing the word register. A new screen's gonna pop up and you can put in your first name, last name, email address, and phone number. And then just come back over to the show and, and keep watching. That's just if you're new on Facebook. But uh, the best thing to do is to get our app. And I see something happened down here that we gotta fix. So let's, we'll see what's going on there. We might have to rethread there. But uh, you have to get our app. You have to go to the, um, the app store and just type in Gloria Horn Sewing Studio and uh, a little sewing machine is gonna pop up. Download our free app. It's the best way to watch, I feel like. And then another reason why you need the app is because we're, um, we're having a private event just broadcasted through the app. So and the, the, the story behind that is that uh, the manufacturer set some price like determinants as far as the minimum price we're allowed to advertise. But if we hold a private event, we can kind of do some special deals that we're gonna talk about. So it's coming up. I think it's gonna be around uh, Valentine's Day, something like that. So you'll, you'll st uh, stay tuned for the emails. That's gonna come out a private event, uh, some special deals going on. So we're excited about that. So let's look at what happened to our machine here. It's just, uh, it just cut thread here. It doesn't look so, I'm just gonna rethread everything. So I'm just gonna take the top thread out here and I'm gonna pull this hoop and just check our bob and just reset everything. And then we should probably be okay here. And I think for this, the placement line, we're okay. We might not have to restitch this, but I wanna make sure it's, uh, it's stitching for us, so. Sometimes that top thread will like throw a loop, you know, and it kind of hangs up if it throws a loop off of the spool. Go. This is the first time I've seen the, the bobbin thread. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, let's re thread our top thread here. And we have these Meridian 2s in stock. So if you are wanting to get your projects done faster, you already have an embroidery machine, but you need a, you need another one, uh, or if you, if you don't have an embroidery machine, this is a really a, a great machine to have. So you gotta um, give us a call and we can get we can get you this machine. I had little snips over Now, the Meridian, it has IQ Designer too, it doesn't does. it? It does, Meridian oh, has okay. IQ Designer. It has the upgrade already installed, so the latest features are already installed on it. Um, and people who have their machines love them. We, we rarely get them in on trade because people hang on to them. So let's see here. So right about there is where it stopped back. So I'm just gonna go back to that spot and kind of re-sew this, this portion. So on this screen here, I'm gonna go down to the little minus plus sign next to the needle. So we're gonna go there and I'm gonna go up a color change. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the beginning of this and I'm gonna advance through I'll say 100 stitches at a time. And we'll just go through here. And we can even put our needle beam on. So it drops a laser drop point right at the, where the needle is gonna go down. That was this button right up here under the Wi-Fi symbol. And then we can just plus 10, I'd say right about there. And then we'll give this a go here. Oh, I gotta thread the needle. It sews better that way. <laughs> it does. It does sew better if the needle's threaded. That's certain. Yep. Perfect. So I feel like this that's lightness there. We might trim that off in a second. Okay, so what it's done is it's stitched our, our placement line all the way around. Let's just take it out of here and uh, so this might be a little easier for everyone to see. We'll go over to a flat surface here. Mm -hmm. we'll come back up here. Yeah, right yeah. Here's good. And then you can trim it. I just want this gone right here. 
Do you think those jumbo cuts would have been the better way to go? Uh, you could definitely use the jumbo cuts, those pre-cut battings. This was cut for the larger hoop, that's why we have that extra there. Okay. But just getting that off will help us there. So, so where can you see right up here? Mm -hmm. yeah, so here's our placement that. lines, and we need to line this up this I need, way. I need to watch this. I usually don't pay too much attention when Gloria's doing it, because I know I'm not going to do it this way. <laughs> but I'd like Let's to know how. So all Steve is doing here is he's uh, lining the seams up with those small placement marks right there. So I've got this stitch line here, mm -hmm. and underneath it is that placement line. So I've just folded that up, and then if I pull this down, if you hold this and fold it down, it should be right where we want it. Is that how you would do it? I guess yep. I want to I want to press this first. This You're going to want to press your seams. I had it, I had it yeah. pressed. I mean, what happened? Any questions so far? Uh, is this a part of Wander Lane? Yes, yes. this is Wander <laughs> Lane. And, and if, even if you were off a quarter inch one way or the other, it really, it really wouldn't matter as long as you, no, as yeah. long as you're not off a lot. Yeah, so we we it. changed the uh, the dimensions of each of these cuts. We yeah. added an inch, so we have uh, so some have wiggle plenty, room. Plenty. Yeah, that's better. If plenty we, of if wiggle we fold, room. If we lay the bottom down first, and then get that on that line there, get this one on that line there and then fold this up. But everything's oversized, so even yep. if you're off a little, it's not. So you're, under, you're over the placement line here and all the way around. And then now we, we press this. Did she press Did that she, first? I, I would... Uh, I'm thinking. Would you ba it's just a basting stitch that's going around here. I think we might want to just give this a little... We'll give it a little press. You could press, press it before. Couldn't hurt. That's what's nice about these Panasonic irons that it fits right in the hoop here. Put this way. Take this back over. Yeah, if you press it a little, it'll make it behave while it face down. Excuse me. So our next stitch is just this placement line or this the tack down line. So we'll go ahead and sew that one out. Oh, the finished product. Yeah. We could show it again. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's right here on the table. Let's show yeah. this one. Here, I'll come back. You can move mine. Watch, watch, so we'll watch. show Ruth Ann's version you. here. <laughs> You're too big for me to catch. <laughs> That's what we're doing smaller. Yeah, that one. Yep. So this is Ruth Ann's. This is the sewing applique version, and this is the machine embroidery yeah. version. So let's, can we can we get close? Get is close. Okay? Sure. sure. All right. And mine has the squares on the bottom because I'm making the the large finish quilt that you'll see in the back of your booklet. So I'm not doing. Each oh, you're doing the twelve I'm month doing, quilt. Yes. Wow. But we got to think of ways that. Because every uh, month I have to make three six inch blocks to yeah, go around, and you make yeah. yours so easy. So we started with July. So yes. we're going to end with uh, June. June. Mm -hmm. And once we have that done, we're going to do the 12 months together. Oh. And uh, we'll see. Oh, we haven't okay. planned for that yet. What okay. are we going to do with our lives once Wanderlane is, once we're done with Wanderlane, yeah. come? What? What are we going to do with our lives? Oh, yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, we've been kind of wandering to death. Pass, yeah. We've been wandering on this lane mm -hmm. all year. Well, Gloria hears that Nancy Halverson has another one coming, coming up. We have something else up our sleeves, so don't worry. We oh. do have something else, yes. And it's Nancy? It is Nancy, mm -hmm. yep. But you know, even her stuff from 20 years ago, 30 years ago, Tommy could digitize that and it's, it would still be current. Yeah, I love uh, Nancy Halverson's work. Mm -hmm. It is awesome, it's the great. artwork she's put together. So when Gloria and I were at Quilt Market, there's uh, a Nancy Halverson design that uh, we're going to work with uh, that we ordered fabric for and it's I don't I don't it's not something new it's something that's been out there a while but uh, we're excited about it we were I'm, I'm I can keep a secret so I, I, won't, I won't say any more but uh, but you guys will be excited about it so so we've stitched down our placement line our fabrics uh, adhered to our hoop here the next thing it's going to sew is a placement line for the hill side um, so for that 
In the book, it tells us you need this. What is this called, Tom? Uh, I want to say it's winterberry snow. Winterberry snow. On the back, we have the hot fix adhesive applied. So we just need to take. Let's see if I earned it well enough. I don't think I did. You want to use the perfect no. scoring tool? No, I don't, no. I don't think that he ironed it long enough. I didn't iron it long yeah. enough. Yeah, One so. thing about hotfix, you have to hold the iron line 15 seconds. Right? It, all, it almost scares you like you're going to like burn, burn, the fabric, the, burn your whole house down. <laughs> yeah. While, I, uh, while I iron this down, do you want to show them some applique? Sure. Okay, let's do that. All right. Don't be afraid to hold it on, and you have to turn it over and iron on the paper right. side, too. Can I be on this side of you? Wherever you want to be. And you go on that side? Wherever I think you want to be. It's usually a good way to go. Okay. Now, since mine was already appliqued before Gloria said I was going to do the show today, I had nothing to show you. So I just took a scrap of fabric I had at home, but I cut out the bunny from the same fabrics that I have on my, on my um, block. Okay. So I'm going to go into, I like my applique stitch in the Q menu. And you come up here and you can scroll across, and there's Q. I didn't even know you could. And I like stitch 14 because I use fabric that I use a thread that matches the fabric when I'm doing this. When I'm doing folk like folksy applique, I might use like a black thread so that the stitches show. I don't necessarily want the stitches to show, but this particular blanket stitch, it goes forward, back, forward, then it hops over. Forward and it builds up a, like a nice little ridge mm -hmm. of that thread right around Let's see. the um Let's right see around if I can the see applique. It. Okay. What was your favorite which one is it? It's Q14, Q14. out of the Q menu. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Q14 is Ruth Ann's favorite application. Yes, stitch. and if you want to do satin stitch, it's Q25. Q25 for satin, but Q14 for, for that, that, per, I, that blanket I, stitch. I like that blanket stitch. Because yeah. the machines have a ton of different blankets. If you're just looking here, 12 is a blanket stitch, 13 is a blanket and stitch. And you know 14, what? Maybe if I go in another menu, I might even find that same stitch. But, 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 but I'm all, you know me, I'm always in the quilt menu. <laughs> and all the, many of the, all the baby locks have that stitch, that Q14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now, for this little tiny pink inside his ear, the blanket stitch has to be really, really tiny. So I'm going to take the width down to, like, hmm, I might have to get down to 1.5. So then I want the length to be just about the same, because when I do a blanket stitch, and this is personal preference, I like it to look like a little square box. I like the bite into the fabric to be the same as the stitch length. On this one, I think I have to do 1.6. They don't have a 1.54 length, okay? So, another feature I love on this machine, it's called needle stitch placement. What's it called, Steve? Needle stitch placement, stitch, stitch, stitch position stitch. placement or something. Yes. I'll go and show you. It's on page four. And it looks like three little needles pointing down. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And what that does is, I'm going to show you in a minute, um, I can put my foot down anywhere. Then I hit my needle down, and it goes down, it hovers just over the fabric, so I can line up exactly yeah, where I want that needle to start. And I've been appliquing for, oh, a century. And it used to be I had to go like this every single time I wanted to start my needle to get it in the right place, mm -hmm. hundreds of times. So I really love this one. And the okay. bobbin thread we used when Ruth Ann's doing this applique is just your embroidery thread. Yeah, I'm just using Just Soltec. your white, mm -hmm. pre-wound embroidery thread uh, and, for this. And I'm using that because I'm using embroidery thread on top, okay? So I'm just going to, I never start at a corner, the corner of his little ear, because it makes it the start and stop too obvious. I always try to start in an area where it's kind of straight. So I'm going to put the foot down. I'm going to drop the needle and see how it hovers. Mm -hmm. And then I can move this anywhere I want. Look. The feed teeth go down and the foot hops up just a little wee bit. So now I think I'm right where I want to be. So I hit needle down again. And there we go. Okay. Oh, it's tying a knot first because they have a, they, I saw on the screen they had it set for tying a knot. Now you sing to yourself when you do this. Kind of, yeah. Forward, you're singing, you're thinking in your head forward, back, forward, over, back. Because you want to know when to stop and when to pivot. Let's hear it. Yeah, forward, back, over, back. Tommy. What is it? Forward, forward, forward back, back, forward, over, back. Forward, back, forward, over, over back. back. Forward, back, <laughs> forward, <laughs> over, back. Like that? Yeah. yeah like okay. Happy birthday. Or like what That's song is going? You can't, oh, okay. you can't sing that. We can't sing happy birthday. Okay, it's I'm going to turn. You always want to pivot when your needle has dropped off the edge of the applique and is in the background fabric. You never want to pivot 
on a blanket stitch when you're on your the applique stitch. They're learning. Now what if you mess up? Yep. Can you go back? Go We're back learning. and do what? Like would you just rip all, all your you could, stitches? You could, you could tear it out, yeah. Okay. But what I do is, let's say my thread breaks for some reason, and I have a lot of, I have a long thing applique. I don't want to start tearing it out. I'll go back and I'll, because I have that needle stitch placement button, I'll go back and I'll hover over my last one that went forward, back, forward. Okay. And I'll hover over that and then I'll start my next one right there. Ooh. Yeah. Back, forward, over, back. Do you, ha you have to sing though. <laughs> I'm not a singer. <coughs> I have this terrible frog in my throat today. It seems like it does that every time I get on the show. I don't know why. Oh, thank you. See, I'm leaning forward. Oh, uh, there it is. That's why I'm sitting here all bent over. I love my magnifier. Thank you. In fact, I had to tighten mine the other day. Don't let me forget to show them how to do that. Yeah. Does it just rest on the top there, or is there something there's a little, holding there's it There's a little in? square hole that goes in. Oh. Now, does this only fit the Solaris, or does it... Ask it Dave. Fits, um, I know the Destiny. It fits the Destiny. Uh, it fits the Altair, the Meridian, and the Solaris. Okay, so we should... We should show them that. Now you see right. how you see how huge these stitches look now. They look really Let's big. Let's see if I can see through your magnifying glass. Oh, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if you go a little crooked with this magnifier on, you think, oh, rats. I'm going to have to tear that out. Wow. But when you take it out, it doesn't look that bad. The magnifier also magnifies any wow. errors. And I'm sitting a little side saddle so PJ can film, but normally you want your nose directly in front of your needle. And we do a lot of side saddle sewing yeah. on the show. You can get into position. I'm, I right. can get a good shot mm -hmm. wherever. I'm right at a corner. So I'm right, going to come, come forward to the corner, back, forward. The needle's right at the corner. Then I turn, and when my needle hops to the left, it's going to hop right over those last stitches I just made. Like this. Then I'll come down this little tiny area. It's still. I hope we have time to do the bunny too, because he was really tricky. Forward, back, forward. forward now I'm going to turn, and I'm going to let it go over, back, right over top of where I just stitched. What'd you see? This is pretty st straight here, so I can go a little faster. Now, when I get to the end, I don't mind if I go over top of my forward, back, forward again. Back. I don't want to go over top of a, of, a, of a stitch that goes into the applique again, because it, it looks funny if you do. Of course, these are so tiny. That looks really good. Okay. Now what I do is I take my side threading needle, Tell me you put side threading needle. Well, we'll talk about it after. So, right? mm -hmm. they, they did have a question. Anna's got a question. What happens if your needle overshoots the tip of the end, like if it, it goes too far? It all depends on how far it went. Sometimes if it looks like it's going to go too far, I kind of hold back on the fabric. So it can't come forward an eighth of an inch. It can only come forward a sixteenth of an inch because I hold the fabric back. But if, it, if you miss it, it just depends on how bad it looks. Sometimes I'll just let it go, and other times you have to pick it out. Okay. The side threading needle, you probably can't see it on the screen. Well, we can see it. The eye has a slit right here. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. Hold that there. Let's see. The slit it's is right here. It won't focus. It won't focus. It's too close. Can you lay it down on, on the... Fabric? Yeah. Then you aren't going to be able to see it because the fabric's oh, yellow. Oh, I can see it. But the fabric's yellow. Let me lay it on the, let me lay it on the bunny. All right. Ah! Shouldn't be that difficult. Okay. There it is. And there is the slit right here. See it? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's there. Now this tail <laughs> is long enough that I can go like this, slide the thread right up the side of the needle, and it'll hop right in the eye. Oh, we got such a good shot of that. Okay. Then I just come back. I try to get in the same hole that the thread's coming out of. It's a little tough because it threads thick there. 
then I pull it to the back like that. And later on, someday, you can see the back of my thing over there. I will trim it. <laughs> it's not trimmed. Someday. No. Yeah, I'm going to stick my needle in my shirt, so don't yell at me. Because if I lay it down, it'll fall on the floor. All right. So now we're going to thread with the gray. And the stitch that Ruth Ann's using, that blanket stitch, it's a self-knotting stitch. So you don't have to knot the end of it because it's just sewn back and forth over itself. Yes. So Many you times. just pull that, that loose thread through and just pull that to the back and it, it's knotted for you. There, you don't have to worry about no, that. No, a regular blanket knot. stitch, like I did on my very first Santa quilt, I tied a knot on every single place that I stopped because it was just a regular blanket. So it, did, mm -hmm. it wasn't locking itself. Mm -hmm. I have a, probably a thousand knots on the back of that. So I'm, I stitched the, uh, the oh. placement line oh, okay. for, right. for the hillside. So our, our hillside, uh, you can see in the preview window of what it's going to stitch out here. And it's hard to see on here, but you can probably see this, the line right there. And I was, I was tight on my fabric. I didn't, uh, I didn't measure ahead of time. I just cut this piece thinking it'd be big enough. And look, it's just big enough. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to help it along here, babysit it to make sure we get these edges here. So we'll put our foot down. And you know, there's a setting in here that you can do that'll make the, you don't have to put the foot down and then, um, uh, let's see, someone's been changing a couple things. So what I'm looking at here, I'm going through the machine and I just noticed like this number didn't have a black box and that number didn't have a black box. Anytime there's a black box around the numbers, it's the default. So our foot height was off a little bit. That could be a reason why uh, we were getting that, that thread wasn't stitching right, so uh. the foot height was off. So someone <coughs> changed the foot height there. So if there's black numbers around the box, it's a quick way to tell that something's not right or something's not to the, the, the default. So I got those back set to our default. And then let's find that here. Embroidery foot auto down. This is going to save you a bunch of time. You don't have to put the foot down and then hit start. You can just hit start and it'll go. So I want to make sure that's turned on and say, okay, there. So we'll stitch this one. Got a little nervous there, so I wanted it to stop for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this down. I'm going to press and hold that button in. I'm not going to let go of the button. I'm just going to hold it in until I get past this corner here because I see my fabric bubbling a little bit. I want to just help ease it in since I cut it real short. I'm still holding the button. I want to see it turn that corner first. It's going to go back the other it's way. It's going back the other way. It's okay, we'll let it go. Itself. It's good. Then. So with this stitch, uh, we're leaving kind of the bottom open. Uh, there will be a, a long basting stitch across the bottom uh, that you'll rip out at the end. So for this, the hill, we do not, we do not want to trim the sides or the bottom, just the top. So we'll trim that here once it's done. Yes, the design's yes. coming on USB, yes. so they're all ready to go. All you do is slide that USB into your machine, and that's it's all set to start sewing for you. There it is. So this, this stitch where you cut along is a real nice tight stitch, real close stitch length. So as you trim, it's just a nice easy way to trim there. It'll, be, it'll go real fast. We're going to use our Femore titanium uh, serrated snips to trim this along. I'm going to take it out of the machine and go over to the table, and I'll trim this up here. And I think Ruth Ann's going to... Yeah, so an important part for this step, though, is that Steve is only going to trim the top, the top of the hill. So he's just going to trim it straight across the top and leave the extra on the sides and on the bottom there. Okay. All right. What do we got over here? All righty. I'm threaded up with my gray thread. 
I wanted to show them how wonderful this automatic needle threader is. It's just, it's just tremendous, especially when you're doing the kind of work Steve's doing and you're changing colors all the time. It's just, so when know, are you going to thread the needle? It's already thread. Yeah, it threaded it when I pushed the button. That's all you had to do. That's all I had to do. <laughs> Okay. I, I ask great questions, I think. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to up my width and length a little bit to two when I start on this ear, and I'm going to come around. But when I get in here, I'm going to have to make it narrower again, or I'm going to be sewing over top of my pink inside ear. Okay. So let's start here. Okay. Now, I want to show you something else. I'm not sure when I ended that I finished a stitch. You know, I it goes forward, back, forward, over, back. I might have gone forward, back, forward, and, and stopped. Mm. So right now it's going to want to go over and back. I feel so, like I'm learning a dance move. When yeah. You're talking, right? <laughs> forward, back, <laughs> over, back. Here's the, um, the, you touch this icon up here, and it brings up all of these. This one will do free motion sewing. This one will sew everything in one color. This will mirror it. The one I want is right here. It has a needle. And then there's a star, a heart, and a star. And what that does, that assures me that when I start to sew, I'm going to be at the beginning of the stitch. Wow. Okay. Because the last All thing right. I want right now is for my needle to go flying over to the left where it's not supposed to be. Okay, so I'm hovering. I'm going to put the needle down. Oh. They have the tie on. I, f I keep forgetting about that. Let's turn that off. We're, we're at Let's right here. These guys. Yeah. Yep, there okay. Go. Oh well, it just tied a knot for me. That's fine. I'm normally quilting, so when I'm quilting and piecing, I don't worry about tying knots. Joni's a garment sewer, so she needs her knots. You always want your stitches to be absolutely perpendicular to your fabric, like that. You don't okay, want that. See that. You don't want that blanket that. stitch to go like this. That just that, that just makes it look so homemade. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can keep it that way on a curve is you have to be patient, and you have to stop and pivot, stop and pivot. Okay. Everything. You're going to have to show them how you did Santa's cheeks. Oh, I, I do. I brought that. I have to brag a little bit. Okay. <laughs> we'll let you finish this part. Okay. And then, uh, well, um, how to do Santa's cheeks. Um, I'm going to put something in there. Okay. We can Santa. sew it. If we have, somebody draws me one, we could sew a little cheek on this bunny. Yeah, maybe. let's do it because I think it's really neat to see. Are, yeah. Yep. What do we need utensil wise to draw it? Just a pencil, a pen. Pencil? Yep. Friction uh, pen. I found one right here. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna guess. Okay, now when I get down in the bottom here at a V, when a V is shaped this way, I always try to stop here and take a stitch right here because I feel like that reinforces that raw edge of that fabric down in that V. So hopefully we'll hit it just right and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. I forgot I have a microphone on. That probably blasted you. <laughs> Okay, one more, and I'm going to be right at the bottom of the V. So forward, back, forward. Then I take a stitch into the bunny, so I know that that V is really attached well. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay. <laughs> now, that, now that I'm going to come up this side of the year, I have to make my stitches smaller again, or I'm going to be stitching over where I stitched before. So I'm going to go down again to 1.5. And 1.6. If this was a Hallmark episode, what would be the title? I'm going to pose that question to the to the audience. DC out there. says it's three men and three GHSS men and a little lady. Ah, who said yeah. that? DC. And so, what's the title of this episode of our Hallmark movie? I've never watched a Hallmark movie. No? Never. No. Never? 
I always figure it's one missing, of those movies that out. boy boy gets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl yeah. back. Isn't that pretty yeah, much? Yeah, that's the... pretty much it. Uh, Ma- I know Maddie loves a... him. Does Chelsea? Yeah. Does your wife like mm-hmm. him every day. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen one. Trying to keep my stitches as perpendicular to the edge as I can. Well, I'm really close on this side. I might even have to go narrower so I don't stitch over the pink. So you, you change the, your setting like mid? I can, so, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to, I can do this. I don't want to do that. I'll leave it the same length. I'm making it narrower that. So I don't stitch over where I already sewed. I'm getting close. Yep. I probably should have had that pink a little further left. I'm coming down to another V. So this is your chance to see that okay. again. Forward, back, forward, over, back. Now I'm, now I'm, at the, now I'm in the V, okay? Mm-hmm. So that's forward, back, forward. Now I'm going to turn so when I go over, I get a good bite on that fabric. I understand. <laughs> now I have to go and back up to something. two. Yeah, uh, can everyone see that shot fine, what she just I did? I think if I can understand what she's doing, then they should... Because if no you problem. don't have that caught with a stitch, that's kind of raw there. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it's, the, it's like unprotected is the only way I can describe it. Right. Now I'm back up to 2.0 and 2.0. And I was telling Steve, with my Solaris at home, when I applique with this stitch, I, I use 2.0 and 2.0 so often. Now when I turn it on, it comes up to that. It doesn't come up to the... <laughs> This, the, the so you could, you, could save your, you could save your stitch, right? I could, I could but it, it, comes, it comes up to it. I guess it says, It just well, knows you. Yeah. Your machine knows you. Yes. You get to that point. Oh. Coming down to another V. In the V, back, in, and then bite into the fabric. Okay. Do you want to see any more, or do you want me to do Santa cheeks? Oh, Let's see, PJ just walked off, so... All right, I'll keep sewing. Okay, what are, you, what are we trying to show? I can, I'm back. We got to show her Santa cheeks and how she did them. So how did you, did you use a machine to do Santa's cheeks? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I used a three-step straight stitch. Okay. We're going to do it on the bunny. I guess so. Can we yeah. give a bunny uh, sure, rosy yeah. cheeks? Yeah, this is just a scrap. Usually I leave some a little something on my wander lane undone, and then I can show it on the show, but I didn't know I was going to be on the show today, and I already had it all applicated. Mm-hmm. Do you want to show the... And I figured the bunny was the trickiest thing, so that's why. While she's doing this? I'm going to show the finishing kit? Yeah. Or... I'm at another V, and I sew in this way to catch it. Great demo and great camera work. So Bonnie's asking about Thank the, the width, and you say you go two and two for usually, width and usually. length. Usually, unless it's a really big piece, and I'm, I might even go 2.2 or 2.5. You want your applique stitch to kind of match the, the what you're doing. If you had a little apple this big, you're not going to use a six inch, mm-hmm. a six width. Mm-hmm. But if you had a great big, like I'm going to show the, um, the the door banner for um, April. We're going to do the door banner for April. It's a big, big brown bunny, so he could have like 2.5 stitch okay. and width. So <clears throat> do you want to finish off on his foot, and then okay. we'll show the, the rosy cheeks. All right. And we gotta sh- where i got to find your Santa that you did the rosy cheeks. It should be laying right over there. There should it is. Be. Right by your paw. Oh, okay. So if you can copy that on the bunny. Mm-hmm. Let's cut. You can see Santa's face there. You mm-hmm. hand stitch these. 
No. No, you didn't hand stitch no. it. Yeah, you used the machine. Oh, hand is a four-letter word. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show how to how to sink the needle again. How to sink the thread with the side threading needle. Okay. Just bring it up. I'm going to show how to do it if it was short. Because sometimes this one comes up short. It's a little too hard to do it that way. So then what I do is I stick it in and I twist it around like a candy cane or a barber's pole and eventually it grabs it and then you pull it through. Ooh. Okay. All right. I feel like we're packing it in with these great tips. Usually yeah. we get like a couple of those like really like blows your mind tips. <laughs> And okay, can you, are you okay. Gonna, somebody going to draw me a little okay. bunny cheek? Okay, you want me to draw the, I'm not, well, I guess I could. Where we have a mistletoe crossing pattern. Just look at his face and kind of copy it. And I had that pen, too. I, I saw it. Okay. I have it's all sorts of pens. Just doesn't you have You want me to do it? Yeah. It doesn't okay. have to be accurate. It's just so, how big are you thinking? Yeah, that's good. Good Lord. That's a big rosy cheek. Is that a big rosy that's cheek? Perfect. That's good. That is perfect. You did a great job. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to menu one. And I like the three-step straight stitch because it looks bold when you do this. I have the gray in. I better put the pink in so you can see it. So I go to the three-step straight stitch. The only problem with that is it automatically moves to left needle position. Joni's not sure why we, we don't want we wonder why they do that. Why do they do that, Steve? Well, where is Steve? Okay, <laughs> Steve ran off. Uh -huh. I don't know. This is a good Steve question. I don't I don't know why they do it. So it just automatically it, resets. It, yeah, it automatically goes to the, to the left side. So I guess I could sew that way, but I prefer it to be in the center. So I just keep hitting left, right, shift, up, 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 and when you hit 3.5, you know you're in the center of the foot because it's a seven millimeter foot. Okay. All right, let me put the pink in so you can see it. And I already threw the pink in my bag so I wouldn't forget to take it home. It's right behind you, PJ. I got it. Every time I teach here, I end up leaving something. I try to keep organized the best I can. If you're not organized, you're lost. Mm-hmm. Of course, my husband says my OCD gets worse every day, so. <laughs> I don't have a trash can. I'm going to put it there. Okay, now again, you get to see how this needle threader works. All you do is push this button. The foot goes down, and it, it hits every time. You can't use that needle threader on a needle smaller than 70. It, it won't go through the eye of the needle. Interesting. And, I didn't um, know that. If you try it, then you're going to be bringing it into Zach to have your little hook replaced <laughs> on your needle threader. Okay. So. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to make my stitch length like just so so tiny. Maybe 1.4. We'll go smaller than that. All right. Okay. I'm going to use my needle stitch placement button. I forget the proper name for it every time I forget. Okay. So now I'm just going to follow. Tommy's drawing. Back, forward. Forward, back, forward. That's better. I'm going to see if I can see through the magnifier. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right. I'll find a way. Right here. Uh, no, it's a little worse for me. Let me lift okay, it up. I'll, I can I'll see without it. I'll move over. I can see without it. No, you're good. It's easier with it. Yeah, use, use your magnifier. I got it. I don't use it when I piece quilts. I'm pretty good with just eyeballing my quarter inch foot, but I use it all the time when I applique because if I hunch, then my back starts to bother me. You can sit straighter with the magnifier. Mm -hmm. One thing, too, you have to, like Keith put track lighting in the ceiling for me. So I have to watch, I have to sometimes tilt this because if not, the, the light hits right on it and mm -hmm. reflects back. So you just have to play with it till you find the, the spot that you like. 
this makes a double magnification if you put the second one down. <clears throat> I don't need that yet to sew, but I'm able to read sewing machine needles if, if I put that down. I don't take compliments very well, but the camera work is good. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and you know, this seems like, like it's tedious, but if you were doing this by hand, it would take this long. Oh yeah. Do you listen to like podcasts while you sew? Mm -mm, I've never listened to a podcast. Never? I wouldn't even know how. You don't listen to the radio or anything? Oh, I, have, I have XM radio on. Oh, okay. 60s music. You know, I would put the TV on. And uh, put the TV on and not watch it, but just listen to the background noise. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only thing is, then I think, oh, oh, that's the price is right. Somebody's going to win something. And mm -hmm. I, then I get up and run over and it, yeah. it, 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 it interrupts me. <laughs> so I'm going to slide my thread in the needle. Since I have a long tail this time, put it in where it came out. And there you go. Hey, look at that. That looks really good. Let me pull the thread up because there's a little loop in it. There you go. That's perfect. Thank you. Wow. Something so little like that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Well, those cheeks on that Santa, I was bound and determined I was going to get them. And she's putting her needle back into the proper yes, I, storage yes, I am. container. That's, a, that's what I do. Wow. That's <laughs> my favorite tip of the day. Yeah. What? Putting stuff back where it belongs. Yeah. Keep, keep organized. Your glory is always saying, I'm putting this back. That's what Ruth Ann does. Yeah. If I'm not organized, I'm lost, you know? Right. Okay. Okay. I think that's it for the bunny. That's it for the bunny. Let's... Uh, we can check, we can check over, here, over here. So we did our, we trimmed our, our hill here. Uh, and the next step is in our book, it shows us wherever our book is over here. The book shows us our next step. And the next step it's telling us to do is so house and chimney placement. So that's what's here in the window. And then it's just following those pieces. So I'm going to hit the start button here. But I think for the applique part, um, these are very similar. Um, all the blocks that we've done so you just keep following these through with the book and it tells you exactly what to sew so it says um sew house trim replacement place uh, pieces of patchwork apple and tack down trim and press so we'll just keep working through this here but um i know we have some other products that we want to show you guys mm -hmm. um that we're going to do and uh we can show the finished sample of this and how it turns out all right back it up Okay. <clears throat> what is it you would like to show first? Let's um, show the uh, the oh show the us. Again real Can quick. she show us how she printed the things? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we can yeah that. Where did that go? This. Okay, this, that's this. there, and then it was from Shamrock Ridge here. I'm getting ready to do Shamrock Ridge next. This okay. is cool. This is really cool. And, so this um, is really cool. you guys know how we love hotfix, and uh, they offer it in printer sheets now and this is to get ready to like to and we're the only ones in the country he told us he told us we're the only ones in the united states that'll be selling the featherweight oh he told us that the only place you can buy he featherweight hotfix in the entire world <laughs> is gloria horn sewing studio or so, from the manufacturer if you want to buy like a 50 yard roll yeah, or something so uh, you, it's a, you're lucky you're watching us here today. So mm -hmm. yeah, but this feather, uh, this uh, this isn't uh, this featherweight. Yeah. Oh, it's featherweight hot fix adhesive inkjet sheets. Yes. Now I don't think he even had a. I asked him if I could have featherweight. He had to do it for me. I guess he had to even make up a cover. Wow. So this applies just like the, but it's in sheets that you can put in your printer. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't have to trace Are you all these. Are kidding me? I'm gonna take it out of here. I didn't have to trace all these. Okay. So let's see the ones that you didn't have to trace. Uh, put it right next to the, um, yeah, that's, that's probably good. So what I did, I took my pattern out. Let's see, we can zoom in on it. Ugh. Why can't I unfold this? Okay. And this right here is where all your pieces are. 
for the big block, for the center block that I'm working on. So I laid it in the printer, and I printed this part. You scanned and it. I, and then I printed that. No, I just printed it, right? I have oh, a copier. Just, just a copier. A copier. Just okay. a copier. Printer. So it's, it's, this is for inkjet printers. Mm -hmm. So your inkjet printer, have, most of them now are combo machines where they scan and do all that kind of stuff. So you'd make it just a photocopy. It's just a 100% photocopy. So you're going to lay this down mm -hmm. on the on the printer glass, the pattern piece, and, and see, you're going to load your hot fix so in uh, inkjet printer paper into the printer. And then it's just going to print this just, onto just this. Just be careful how you lay it down because I had it up too far this way, as you can see. And I got all this on the bottom, Nancy Halverson. I cut off the roof and I cut off the door. So I told PJ, probably what you should do is just run a, a plain sheet of paper through first and make sure you're getting this the, the copy that you want. We do it nice because we do it twice, yeah. right? <laughs> do it twice. So do a little test, test copy, make sure everything looks good where mm -hmm. you want it to be, and then and then do a real copy with your ink check. And you can see that. I have so. all the pieces because this little part's here, you know. So I have the full hat there, and then I have the house over here. Could you imagine having to trace every single one? Oh, let's put it back down. Oh, uh, yeah, I can trace, imagine. Well, I do it all the time. All the time. Tracing every single one of these all out? Mm-hmm. Not anymore. Yep. Yep. The well, only easy, thing easy, you easy, can't yeah, copy, backwards. the only thing you can't copy, i got to tell you, is the hill. Because okay. the paper is only 11 inches. Okay. So what you would you would have to trace that, but that's easy. Yep. Mm-hmm. So these, you get... Uh, how many sheets are in this package? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. There's our plastic bag. Yeah, where's our cover? Oh, oh I have it in my hand. So this, you get 12, 8.5 by 11, featherweight, hotfix adhesive, inkjet sheets. It's got to be an inkjet printer. Uh, print, copy, or scan your design or pattern, and then fuse to your fabric, and then cut. It's that easy. It's permanent, washable, no stitching required, can be stitched over, and it won't come up your needle. It's the same featherweight hot fix that we love. And it, it's amazing to me that it's permanent and it doesn't gum your needle. I, yep. I really didn't believe it until I started using it. I, it was hard to believe. So, uh, what side do you print it on? Let's see. It is says it, right it? here. It says right here. Print this side, featherweight hot fix. Iron this side, hot adhesive. Okay. This is the side it prints on. That's the side you iron on. All right. Do you, you want to show them that with? Do, Here, let's get a sheet. Let's get a sheet that doesn't have anything printed on yeah. it. Okay. Right there is good. Say, print this side. Hey, you can put lay it flat. I'll lay it I'll, flat. Uh, okay. Zoom in on it. Print this side, featherweight, and iron this side. Yeah. Thank you for that for putting that, that on there. And he was very kind to send me two packages so we could try it. So I have one in Gloria. Has and I don't one. think it'll reverse when you're using the copier because, you know, you're, you're making a copy. No, like, it'll, like no it'll, it'll make it. See, they have it reversed for you. So once you fuse it and you turn it over, oh, then it's right. Right. All these patterns are already reversed. They're reversed. Yes. Yeah, so it prints out just like, the, just like the pattern. Could you iron the printed pattern on your fabric? I don't know how to. What do you mean? Use it for machine embroidery. Um, could you iron the printed pattern onto your on your fabric and use it for machine embroidery? You can still use this featherweight hot fix for machine embroidery, but this this is really like if you're cutting them out. If you're using the embroidery part, I'm thinking it's stitching down the fabric and you're going to trim around it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if we have any YouTube questions too, because I don't want to forget them. Machine, we can uh, use it for machine embroidery. Could you iron print? Well, you're you're doing machine embroidery with hot fix up on the back of mm -hmm. everything. And then the, the embroidery part is the kind of the printer in Good. there too already, because the the machine stitching out the placement, mm -hmm. and then you lay it down, and then it's tacks it down, and we trim the fabric. This is if you're going to traditional, I think, application machine, applique. machine applique, or if you just want the sheets like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's available but, here. I thought it was really. But let me tell you what's going to be really cool. What's going to be really cool? Get ready for this. Glorious summer. Glorious summer. Today I printed out two sheets just on copy paper, and all of her designs are eight and a half by eleven. That's the way she puts them out, and then you can print. We'll, you'll be able to print all it's your glorious summer. It's perfect size. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she even puts up a little box here, and says, "Make sure that this box is two inches square to make sure it's accurate." That's ge that's also genius. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can measure that after you've copied it so you can verify that it's yes, the right Yes, and so size. you'll be able to print all of these on the hotfix. Over on YouTube, we have someone saying, good evening from Norway. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have a gal watches this in New Zealand all the time, Trudy Urquhart. 
New Zealand, Norway. Mm -hmm. I've heard Australia. Yep. Canada. So, uh, glorious summer. We're uh, it's in the bubble now. So it's this. Um, we grab the binder there. It's this um, project here. Now this is our shop binder. Yours will come like this. Oop, let's show that this one has then. this has le you know lesson plans and everything in it. So this is uh, another project that Ruthann is doing with us. She's done uh, a couple projects with us. We did. Um, a, Sincere, a Santa, six, sincerely yours. Sincerely yours. That we was done this way in a hoop. Santa was done with traditional machine Applique, embroidery. Looked like a block of the month type thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing uh, this glorious summer, and it's this this applique work quilt here by Smith Street Designs. Mm -hmm. um, it's done block by block, machine applique. There is some still piecing involved in things. We're going to have different kit colorways available to you. We'd like to do um, exactly what's on the cover so that. Um, so people can see their projects in our turnout just like this. So we've ordered all the fabric from Better Tex mm -hmm. to, to make the quilt look just like this. And then the variation that we're going to offer is there's going to be one with this red background. And then all the applique flower pieces are all going to be the same for the different variations that we're also going to offer. So we're going to offer a, 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 like a cream. A cream with like an oatmeal. Because you can see this is a lighter and a darker, but they're very close. So there's just two shades of that, that maroonish cream. red there. Yes. And then we're going to offer two shades of the cream. So there'll be a cream version. All the applique flower pieces are going to be exactly the same for all the quilts that we're, yes. that we're offering. And then we're doing a navy. A navy one. Lighter navy, darker navy. And then we're going to do a charcoal and black. A char okay, okay. So mm -hmm. we're going to have four different variations for you guys to choose from. One just like the cover, color, and then a cream one, uh, a navy one, and then a charcoal um, one as well. Oh, the black would look so good mm -hmm. on this pop I have, off on black I haven't like that. been here since yeah. last Wednesday. That's when we ordered. Actually, the sales rep was here that day, DJ. So that's when we ordered, and I have no idea where that stands. I don't know if they're in or... Oh, I was reading what Gloria was texting me. I'm sorry. Okay. I, was, I, yeah. I have no idea if the fabrics are in yet. I have no They're in order. They're coming. So mm -hmm. we're going to get those fabric kits together uh, and offer these for you. So get the patterns now, um, and, and you'll be you'll be right online and we, to, to we, start we with we us tried as to, we do this. For the applique fabrics, we tried to pick stuff that had a little texture look to it, not just solids, even though this kind of reads like solids. And we tried to follow all her color suggestions, because in our binder, she's showing all the fabrics that she used. And so we tried to follow those. So, um, and these are, this is um, machine applique or embroidery? Oh, this is in Embro the hoop. Oh, this is in, in the hoop. hoop. Okay. Oh, yeah, Smith so, Street. Yep. But so the, other, the other thing about this is that there's other designs or, or products that we, um, we're going to offer you guys to uh, back here. So let's look at those here. See, see how we picked the colors? Look, I wrote all the color numbers on them. We were trying to emulate what she did. Because the fabric line that they chose is no longer available. Some of so it, yeah. So we, we decided that we just were going to do our... So we just tried to emulate these colors. So let's see. Let's go back here. Where's the... Oh, project's back here. Mm -hmm. So... Nope, did it too far? Yep. Okay. Page, one page at a time. So there's some other... So if, if, you, if you like this quilt, but you decided maybe that the entire quilt isn't something you want to do, or maybe you want to do the entire quilt and you want to keep doing more, there's this like Wonder Lane, like with, Wonder all the, Lane. with all the extra ones. Yeah, flower bouquet square. So it is a 30 by 30 size quilt. I believe our Wonder Lanes are 30 by yes, 30. Yes, they are. And this one um, is a variation of it. The blues and whites look really great. So this is going to be uh, uh, available to you guys as well. What's the hoop sizes for this? Does it say I on there? I think I've been looking through it, and I emailed her, and I didn't hear back. I think you're going to need at least a six by ten. Okay. To do the, to do this, I'm. I was when I was looking through it, I, and I emailed her, but she didn't answer. So I'm going to try again. So this is one of the uh, the extra projects that you will be available uh, for you guys as well. Um, Sugar the table runner. Everybody loves the table runner. There's the table runner. But I think the, the other one. Too. Turn the page. So Wait. One. Turn the page. Keep going. There's quilting designs for your table runner. Oh wow! That Look are included. At those. Mm -hmm. Yep. At the corner, feathers like scrolls, feathers. So there's this, that table runner is one of the bonus projects that you'll be able to make as well. And the bonus projects do not come in the pattern. I like they have to come from us, so you have to own the pattern for us to give you. Yes. And I um, love that. The welcome is really nice. And see, she shows you each one of these sections is a section. So then she shows you, this is my nighttime reading, she shows you how to keep folding the fabric and moving it in the hoop, move it up, move it up, move it up, so that you get this this arch effect. Oh, okay, I see. Yep. Because mm -hmm. this is all, if we look down here at the welcome, it's just one. 
Is it okay to show a close up of this? Yeah, it's okay. fine. I'd show a close up of the colored picture. Yeah. That's my if favorite. This welcome, if these are one solid pieces, so the, the welcome is going to be embroidered on there with just those yep. one solid pieces. But here's the. Uh, Makes it look like it's all one piece. Mm -hmm. So if you pick a background like that, it sure looks like it's all one piece. Cool. I love that one. What love else is there? There's, there's more. Is there another one? There's another one. Oh, yeah. Crown jewels wall hanging. So yeah. this is the 36 by 36, a little bigger. A piece um, border around there with the applique um, flower blocks for the center. That's a pretty one as well. So it's just a little bigger. We did Garden Club here once too, remember? Yes. Yep. And, and we did um, Wildflowers. We did, yeah. And the, she likes to do this piecing a lot. Garden Club had a lot of those kind of uh, triangles in them. And Ruth, you have a trick for those, don't you? Don't you use the paper piece? That, they're not the paper, but the papers for those or not for those? Not for those. Not no. for those. But um, Ruth Ann is a, is a wonderful piecer. She can teach you how to get those um, perfectly pieced pieces for us. So anything else back here? I think that's it on I this one. I think that's it. Yeah. So these, um, they don't automatically come with the pattern, but we're going to give them to you guys because it it's, that's our, at our discretion. And, of course, we want you guys but to have it all. Has, so, have it, has anyone already received this? I don't know. If they have, then we're going to have to mail them to them, make we'll, copies, or email. It would probably be a... We a, could scan an email. It would probably. probably be a PDF file because they're already in PDF file for us to mm -hmm. send over. So, mm -hmm. um, but... Um, but we need to know who already has it. We can tell. Yeah. We can tell. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, See, I'm not into that end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it all done in the hoop? Most of it's most of it's done in the hoop. There is some still piecing involved and things like that. Well, yeah, you're going to have to... Yeah, you're, once, you, once you make this little block... Oh, I shouldn't have put the plastic on, sorry. Once you make this little block and put that little border around it, then it has to be joined to that block to that block, and then this is probably a triangle shape that fits in. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked that far yet. All of the applique work is in the hoop, though. Yes, absolutely. All of these, all these circles and everything is all in the hoop. Um, and then you have to decide whether you want to print them on hot fix, cut them out, and whenever, whenever the machine says, okay, put the green right there, then you then you iron it down, and then it appliques around it. If you don't want to do it that way, it'll draw a little circle for you. You'll lay the fabric down. It'll stitch around. Then you have to trim, like this, oh, around each one. Yep. So I'm I'm thinking I'm going to go hot fix. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but yeah, the quilting background designs those are going to be coming with the, the extra stuff that we'll be sending out later. So we're going to get working on that. But just know it's coming. So. And yeah. when you work with the hot fix, here's how I do it. I will iron. You know, I'll print my hot fix, I'll iron it all on. And then in the evening, when I'm sitting in front of the TV with my husband, I'll sit and trim out, you know what I mean, trim out all these little circles or trim out these flowers. And then I have them ready for the next day to get them ironed on. Can you back and show the table? I want to see the entire table. Okay, we'll go back here. You got it, Mobo. Let's <laughs> see. Projects. So. I personally love this table runner. I love this color combination. I wasn't crazy about the colors on the table runner, but that's just personal Oops. preference. This one. There we go. This one here. So okay. that's the flower bouquet square. It's mm -hmm. a 30 by 30 quilt. That's a, one of the bonus projects. Then we have... You know how we love table runners around here? Yep. The table runner on every table. There's the 34 by 17. And see, you can't see the quilting here, but you can when you see the black and white. I, I just think... That looks Christmassy to me, those colors. I think I would have liked something a little less bold or bright. Well, you could make yours different colors. With I them. know, <laughs> I know, but I love it. I just don't like the colors they chose. And then here's the background quilting on this one. And then... That's very cool that you can just... The welcome table runner there. And that's the nice thing about these. Is if you don't like their color combinations, you pick the colors that you like. I, see, that I work love well that with one. You. I that love one, that yeah. one, yeah. And then there's uh, what, two more in here? One more? Yeah. The last one is more like, um, oh, no, well, it's called quilt. jewels. It's jewel tones. Yep. Yeah. But it can be any color. I mean, it could be done in black, white, and gray if you want to. It doesn't have to be done in jewel tones. So these are really good. So get your, get your patterns, and then uh, we'll be working on this. We're going to get dates picked and things like that. Oh, and then the other thing is that we're doing the version on the cover. Mm -hmm. This is the one that we've decided to do. Now, there is another variation for you to set up your quilt in this configuration, too. So on the back here. And they, and they had suggestions for fabrics for that, too. That if you wanted your quilt to look like this instead, they give you the layout to, to make your quilt sure. look like this. So mm -hmm. 
So a lot, a lot of options with this. Uh, when will the kits be ready, please? Well, the fabric hasn't even arrived yet, so <laughs> it will be uh, as soon as they, they arrive and we can get it all sorted out and stuff. Uh, we'll be, but uh, when will this start? I think it's kind of dependent on... I think it's going to be at least a month or so. When at we least. get, when we get the, all the products in, we want to make sure we're well set up for well, you guys. Well, we want to them this. to have the, their stuff before we start. Yes, we want everyone to have their things. So I think uh, it'll be it'll be um, this year sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be a, 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 I'm sure, yeah. at least a month or so. So, But we're making all the kits... Uh, for you guys, so you guys don't have to pick any of the fabric out yourselves. You're going to have the exact pieces that we're using in class. You can look and see, oh, this is the color Ruthanne is and, using. And the kits are going to be cut very quickly because they're cut in fat quarters and fat eights. Okay. We're not cutting six inch squares and eight inch strips and all that sort of thing like we had to for the Santas. So you're going to have the exact fabric Ruthanne's using. You can look at the video and follow along and do it just like us. So okay. that's it's so going to be good. One more thing. Okay. We're going to start the Riley Blake door banners. Okay. And but I, uh, Gloria told me I'm pretty sure that we're going to start with April. Yes, we are. And you see, Happy Easter, and uh, and Easter is actually in March this year. So Nancy, <laughs> the color options again are the maroon red color. There's going to be a cream color, a navy, and, and a, a charcoal, charcoal black. black. Mm -hmm. So navy, charcoal black, cream, and like that reddish maroon, like the cover. Now we have this available today. Oh, do we? We do. We're, but we decide to start with Easter because since Easter is Just, uh, he'll refresh there. Since, he'll since, refresh, okay. yep. since Easter is March thirtieth, if if we get going with this right away, you can have yours done before the actual Easter day of March thirtieth. Yes. Uh -huh. So this uh, this is the Happy Easter door banner from Riley Blake. It's, it's all a, applique. It's a kit that they've come up with for these different door banners throughout the year. We're offering uh, the kit that comes with um, the pattern. And uh, all the fabrics to mm -hmm. do the quilt top, the applique and they, pieces. And that, they seem to give you lots of fabric. They do. I have a lot left over from the, uh, uh, Jan I did January thinking we were going to get started. And then we couldn't get started because the kits weren't available. So then I started, I was going to do February. And Gloria said, oh, no, we'll never make it there because the kits aren't here. Yeah. Do March. Then I started March and she's like, no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe we should go with April. So I have these little piles of things started. So Ruth Ann's gonna, she's got them all started for us. But even you can see, even the big guys, even these big companies have trouble sometimes getting their kits out on time mm -hmm. like they're supposed to. So we're starting and with, these, the, and these with are, the Happy These Easter are done, one. if any of you watch Kimberbell, these are done Kimberbell style. You start with this right here, and it tells you, well, not this is a bad example because it's applique, but it'll tell you, get yourself a baggie, label your baggie green, and you're going to put in three squares and so many triangles, and, and it's done. You know, Kimberbell does all that up up mm -hmm. front. And then when you go to sew, you're not grabbing a green piece of fabric, cutting a two-inch square, and then later cutting. You, everything's all cut and labeled. And so I put little Ziploc bags with the pieces in, and they they label them like A B C D, and then they go A A, and then they go A A A. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces, and I label a little bag and I put it in a big bag that says green or whatever the name of the fabric is. So when I need it, it's right there, right at my fingertips, and it's all labeled. And this, our kit is going to include all the fabrics for the, the, the front, the back, and we're also including the backing is with it as well. Um, we saw some other places selling the, 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 the um, everything separate. We decided to just do a one complete oh, kit. I, really? Because this, this doesn't say they provide backing, so you're going to provide backing. We're, we're going to provide the backing for you. So you're going to have a complete kit. We, we think it's nice that the projects, uh, you have everything you need to start and finish the project. The only thing you're going to have to add is the hot fix adhesive for the for the applique for pieces. Applique. But as far as the fabric goes, we're going to mm -hmm. include all the fabric that you Are need. Are we doing wrap around binding? I think so. We're going to do wrap around binding. Okay. So this... Uh, because normally each one of these gives you like three-eighths of a yard or something for binding. And this so you'll includes, have a piece left over. This includes binding. So if you want to do binding the traditional way, oh, yeah. you'll be able to do that because it does include the binding. But we're going to give you a backing fabric that, with enough to be able to do the wraparound binding if that's what you choose. And then... So it'll be our choice on the backing. We'll pick something good that looks good when you wrap it around. And it says in this, the first line it says, now listen here. This is what the first says. Please read all instructions before beginning yes. the project. So just to remember that when you go to this home, just that first thing it says read all the instructions and it goes through this includes a uh, tooth all these here's the, the kit all includes is that okay to share yeah it's mm -hmm. okay to share right. i should have brought one that had all the cuts in it 
to show you how they have you cut everything. These are, there's two thirds yards of this. There's a half a yard of something else, a fat eighth, another mm -hmm. fat quarter, and then these little five inch squares and different things for all the pieces already cut for you. The other supplies that you will need is the um, non-directional backing, which we are including for you. Um, fusible, that, that's the, we're gonna use the hot fix mm -hmm. for that. And four inch cut of fabric for a hanging sleeve. Oh, so if you wanna do a hanging sleeve, you're gonna have enough fabric in that backing fabric to be able to do um, uh, the, the the traditional. So you will be able to have the binding that they're including to do the traditional binding if that's what you choose to do. And oh. if you don't do the binding, you can use that for your sleeve on the back. There we go. You'll mm -hmm. be all set then. Yep. So, yeah, get in on What this. I do, do, we have a project bag around here. Yeah, I have one. Wait a minute. But you're, 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 people are going to look at your house. You're going to have this on your front door. You're going to be the, the, the people walking by. And, the, and it's, if it's warm enough out there, they're going to see your little banner This out is there, my so. project bag I brought today because there's more, more Wonder Lane fabrics I have to pick up. But I take this project bag, and I take those stick-on mailing labels, mm -hmm. the ones that are about, about 2 and 5 eighths by 1 inch, and you put it on lightly. You don't rub it on real hard, and you write the name of the fabric. I had Clover Sparkle on this, on this shamrock. And then I, I get a little Ziploc, a couple little Ziplocs, and Clover Sparkle, part A is cut five squares. Part B is cut three squares. Part, and so I put them in little baggies, and I, I mark this one A, B, C. I put them in the bag for, in the for Clover yeah. Sparkle. Okay. So then when they say you need, you need block A, I know it's in here because I can see through here. And I can see all my little baggies with A, B, C, D, whatever. These on bags are the best thing. Oh I've my found. gosh, they're These wonderful. These little zipper bags, you can see through them. They hold a bunch of stuff. I think PJ's scrambling right now. I asked him if he could put these in the bubble in case you need more. Because once you get them all set, you, you just keep them and you know. Well, stack the them thing in your is, drawer. I have two sets of them, and now they're all used up because I've got Wonder Lane stuff in, in some, and I have the door banner stuff in some. Try um zipper Piece. pouch. Mm -hmm. Okay. I should have told you to put that in. I forgot. That's okay. That's okay. Because I got it. And we showed Santa's no, cheeks, right? Right there. there it is. Those are the yep. okay. 11 by 16. Is that what these are? Yep. Yep. These are the, well, these are the, these are the slightly small ones. The ones we have in the bubble are going to be the little bit bigger ones, but which are great okay. too. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I yeah. like the bigger ones. Bigger's yeah. better. Where's the, where's the bigger ones? Are they down here? Oh yeah. Here's the bigger ones. Is this the bigger? Yes. Yes. So this is the, this is the size we're going to put in. I like, I like this bigger size. This is 11 by 16, and you're going to get how many zipper pouches in here? 11. You're going to get, oh, that's the size. Oh, that's 11. 16. Yeah. I forget how many. You get, you get, you get less than you with the small ones, you. but you Let's still see. get quite a few. PJ's going to tell eight us. Eight pack. I just saw eight. Eight pack. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get eight of these. The zipper pouch. They and be, all come and being colors. that it's 11, it, it's big enough to put your eight and a half by 11 patterns in. You know, yep. like if you want to slide this pattern down you in See there. the pattern book fits right there? And you can kind of see right through it. So these are great. And they're pretty tough. I use them yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah they're rough. They're tough. They don't You're not going to lose your little pieces that you've uh, spent all that time putting the hotfix on. Mm -hmm. So I just applied hotfix for the very first time. And boy, you have to hold that iron on a lot longer than I thought. Yes. So, yes. And the, um, the way this is done and the way they have you do half square triangles and all that, it, this is really a good beginner quilter, I think. This one? Confident beginner. No, oh, that's this. applique. Okay. But I'm talking about like, like January and... Okay. Now March is a little tricky with the shamrocks, but they'll they'll get better as they go along. What so size that, is that one? Somebody asked. They're twenty by forty. Oh, they're twenty by thirty six. Twenty by thirty six. Yeah, twenty inch wide by thirty six long. So it's a nice size. Thirty six. Uh -huh. That's that's quite big for a door hanger. So if I keep mine and don't, don't give them here as a sample, I'm going to have to hang mine on the inside of my front door because the sun beats on my. Front oh, does door. it? So in about a week, it would be yeah. it would be trashed. Hanging on mm -hmm. your back door. Oh, there you go. Yes. So, uh, let's see, what are we up to next? Did you want to do the quilting through the seasons you mentioned you wanted to oh, show again? Do you want to do the finishing uh, kit for this one? Finishing quilting through the yeah, seasons? Exactly. I don't know what that is. Oh. What is quilting maybe, through Maybe I'm mistaken. Okay. I think, I'm probably mistaken. I, I think quilting through the seasons is we're going to talk about tomorrow. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, but the finishing kit. Is that Kimberbell? Mm-hmm. Will you be selling the side threading needles, Gail? We sure are. They're going to be coming up here just shortly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is our finishing kit. So when we do these projects, we've um, bundled fat quarter bundles of the different Wander Lane 2 and Whisper Weave 2 that you need for the projects to do all the applique pieces. But these finishing kits are designed so that you have enough to do borders and backgrounds and backings of the different projects. So there's the fat quarter isn't going to be enough to do the 
no. background and, and the binding, I mean, the, Border. the borders and the backing uh, and backgrounds for some of these. So we've put together this finishing kit so you have all the fabrics to do it and we've matched the pictures so you have enough here to do all the projects. So there's, uh, I wish I knew all the names of these, but some you guys, some of these people, some of you guys know uh, who work here all the, what these are called. But there's all the different reds that you need for borders and backgrounds. Uh, there's uh, Whisper Weave in here and Wonderland. Oh, it's all pinned down for yeah, us. Yeah, this is the roof yeah. of the house right here. This is the door on the house. Mm -hmm. so I, and there's, I forget how, there's almost like seven, seven yards, yards of, I seven think yards of fabric Gloria in here for yards. you. So this is great. Uh, I've got some color issues. I, I, I have to replace this camera. Okay. But uh, see, it's getting replaced. Very, see, very, you, it's, it bees very particular with these see, colors. See, now the color looks good he up here, that, but on he your wants screen, them it looks to turn pink. Out very, like, perfect. So when you guys are looking it at it, it yeah. it'll look perfect. So that's pretty I am close. He's replacing uh, this camera. He's, he's working that's, on that's our camera. That's pretty close. So. That's pretty close, though. It's close, yeah. The pinks look a little orange. That's the only they thing do. I see. But yeah. they, these are really pink. Remember when you your TV, you could adjust that color? Yeah. And you know, like when you can go into someone's house, you could tell if they were just a little bit colorblind because their TV set was just a little bit off and didn't look right. My grandmother was like that. Her, she was a little bit colorblind and her always looked a little funny. Mm -hmm. and my dad would get in there and adjust it and she'd, he'd leave and she'd get back and she'd turn it back to the way it was. So it's funny. But these are all the, the, the finishing kit uh, fabrics for um, Loveland Cottage. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Uh, let's do, um, Who's, um, we did the banner, we did the zipper pouches, uh, uh we could do this. The magnifier. The magnifier. If you guys haven't gotten a magnifier for your machine yet, it's a great product that Baby mm -hmm. Lock came out with for you guys to be able to really see what you're doing up close to the machine. You can try other, um, magnifying things that attach or that sit in front of the machine, but this one designed by Baby Lock fits on the machine perfectly. This is going to fit on the Solaris, the Destiny, the Altair, and the Meridian, because you need, let's, let's show them which hole they need on to how to attach okay. this here. Oh, I'll take here. That. Oh, so, I got it. Guys. Okay. Um, all right, let's if you're, if you're asking if this is going to work on your machine, um, I know a lady had asked if this will fit on her brother Quattro. This is what you're looking for on the top of the machine. It's like is a square these, hole. These square holes up here. Because you have this square mm -hmm. plug here that this fits into. So I know the Destiny has it, the Altair, the Meridian, and the Solaris. So what this does is it just that square plug right there goes in there and just sits right there. I know there's a little magnet here. That holds it in place so it doesn't wobble when you're doing it. Oh, and then, I didn't know that. Yep, it's just I feel it like uh -huh. magnetized right there. And then when you're threading, you just flip this up, do all your threading, and back down. It's got a little bumper here so it doesn't vibrate on you. There's two magnifications. Ruth Ann said almost the double is like it's like. I can read a I can read a sewing machine needle. You know how small those sewing machine needles. You can't even barely mm -hmm. see the size, and she could, so you can flip it up. I don't need it for sewing, it but I can use it for. I have to tell you, you Christmas, my husband bought me a new yeah, watch right band. For my Apple see, Watch, mm -hmm. and he bought the wrong size. Swirl. And so. There it is. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter Sally said, "Well, you have to look inside the watch band at the number that's in there, so you know which one to buy." He had to go down when I wasn't home one day and use this. this. Oh. He used this so he could see the number on that's the inside fine. of my watch band. Mm -hmm. So even your husbands will use it. Mm -hmm. So, and then when you when you get it home and you start using it, Ruth Ann always mentions that there is this little wheel on the back here to tighten it, because as you use this and flip this up and down, it it's starts to get very get, loose. And then you just take this and, and you, you just roll it up, turn it, roll it up. With your mm -hmm. thumbnail like that. And it just tightens it, tightens it, it. so it doesn't move around on you. So like I said, I, I use mine so much, but I only had it about a month. I thought, boy, this thing's getting floppy already. If yours is floppy, <laughs> turn that wheel <laughs> yep, up and yep. it'll, it'll tighten it up for yep. you. So It's pretty ingenious that they thought Do of Do you that. ever take yours off the machine? Uh, when I'm embroidering, I'm always afraid that maybe someday it'll vibrate and land on the hoop or something. Yeah. So, so I do take it off when I embroider. But it flips up for you nicely. When I'm piecing, I just flip it up. Flips down, flips up. I feel like the eye doctor. One or two. <laughs> three or four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this next? Oh, so these are nice. So Very nice. Have you ever struggled with getting the roll out and like getting the right size? And then and it's cut? like this once you get it in the hoop. It's and all you've rolled up. Cut it and you're like, whoa, I cut way too much and you've got all this extra, or if you cut it and it's just a little bit short, 
pre-cut sheets to fit the biggest hoop. So these are. I, I think when I bought when I bought my Solaris, I was one of the first people to buy a Solaris. I think we got a pack of these. Did we? Uh huh. These are called jumbo cuts, and these are the same people that bring us our, our um, stabilizer it's designs and machine embroidery. Uh, these are called the jumbo cuts. These are the medium tearaway. Just like just the like same we had the hoop that today. We do on the roll. Where's just our like biggest hoop? I think it's down here. Oh, it's right here. So. So these are cut perfect size for you. If I lay the hoop over, you can see that you have enough on all the edges. Yep, just fits. That it just fits perfectly. And you're not having all that stuff mess that's flopping, flopping down around. on you. Uh, and there's not a bunch of extra that you're, you're wasting. So it's, they're perfectly cut for your largest hoop. You get 50 sheets in here, uh, and they are 15 inch by 24. And it's the same medium weight tear weight that we use um, on the roll, just in pre-cut sheets for you. So it's a nice way. And then, then they said if you um, if you fold this. I forget where it said it. Maybe I saw it on, the, on, their, on their website. And if you have a but smaller I, hoop, you can always cut it in the middle. Let's see. They had uh, five by sevens. You can get one, two, so you Probably get three, three five by sevens out of it. So this way. So there's three five yeah, by sevens. Yeah, looks like you would. And then well, they said it's another size, too. Uh, well, eight by eight or six by six we use a lot. Or six by ten. Something, but yeah, you can get some I bet other, a six by ten would go this way, so you'd get probably get maybe get three of those. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, you would. You might. Yep. So you can use it for those, and then if you just fold this in thirds and slice it, then it's going to be perfect size for your five by seven hoop as well. So you can use it for more than just the largest hoop. Uh, you can use it with the other size hoops too. So I think these are great. Fifty sheets of the medium tearaway. So jumbo cuts. Is this new? Uh, yeah. yeah, new. Yeah, we've. I don't know if they've had them. We just didn't carry them. Okay. But then. Uh, we, like I said, I got a pack that said Baby Lock on it with my Solaris. That was something that yeah, came up yeah. like with a bundle. Uh, I think that. we need uh -huh. these up yeah. here. We're keeping these. So, uh, yeah. what's uh, do we well, have the you others? Mentioned the needles. The, uh, oh, side threading the needles. Side threading needles. They saw me using them. They're just great for burying threads. And I, I'm a long arm quilter. I haven't long armed in a while because I've been having issues. But I use it to bury my threads on the long arm too when I'm quilting. Did you ever have to bury? You had to bury your threads. You used to quilt, no? You just I'm, not a thread, I'm not a thread barrier. You I just, just snip, snip it. it. Snip uh, it to the level of the quilt. Okay. I only thought crazy people did that. So here we go. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you, you can also use those to get like a thread out of it. Uh, if you get red thread underneath the, mm -hmm. the white, you can stick that under to get mm -hmm. those out. But yeah, if you're burying your threads, these definitely help for that. Yes. I just clip it off and I mm -hmm. get to go and sew. Okay. But. Um, and then there was something else. I forget what it was. You might want to, how about showing them the finished bunny since I didn't finish the okay. bunny? You want to show them my finished bunny here? Yep. It's going to switch over here. The bunny. Okay, let's see. And your bunny's peeking out underneath. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cool. Yeah. He's, he's, getting, his like, ma he's getting a valentine. Well, no, the flag's up. He must be mailing a valentine. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the flag is up. There's, and that's that's the baby lock stitching. Ruth Ann does a fabulous job mm -hmm. of stitching it down. But that, that those baby locks give you a, a, a very a perfect stitch. Well, I was, a, I was an owner of another brand for years and years and years, from 84 till 2014. And when, when Gloria started selling baby locks, she said, oh, I don't think Rosanna will ever buy a baby lock because she always buys this other brand. But this, they have the best stitch quality I've ever seen. You heard that from Ruth Best stitch quality I've ever baby seen. Baby locks have the best stitch quality she's ever seen. Mm -hmm. so and that, and, and you, this is the only company in the world that you can call the company and talk to a tech when you have a problem with your machine. Any other place, you would call Steve. Steve would say, well, I'll check into it. And he'd have to call headquarters and wait and wait and wait. Then he'd have to get the information, call you back. No, you call and you get a tech. It's unbelievable. On your owner's manual, printed right on the front is a phone number. No one in the world anymore has phone numbers to get a hold of anyone, but Baby Lux still does, which is mm -hmm. nice for a big company. Um, your numbered sheet. We wanted, to, oh. we, let, we wanted to show them that. Yes. I'm glad whoever said that. Thank you for reminding us. We wanted to show you it the numbers for this. It is in maybe that book. All right, I had it out. Where, where did it go? It's a big white sheet. Big white sheet. Hmm. This is mine too. It's probably underneath. Keep keep looking. There you go. There it is. Okay. Let All me right. fold up Shamrock Ridge. That'll be next month. I'll number that one next month. So we'll we'll post we'll post this 
uh, for you guys. But if you want to do a screenshot, you're more, please do your screenshot now uh, with the numbers here. Uh, but we'll post this on the product description as well. Uh, so you guys will be able to see it. Mm -hmm. But the numbers, Ruth Ann's going to go through the number number of the pieces one, for Number you. one is your hill. Okay. Number two is your house. Number three is your roof. Four is the chimney. Five is the flower pot. I did the flower pot before this so I could slide that one under because I wanted the, the perfect placement on the flower pot. Then six is the, is the tree. Seven is the outside of the heart. Eight is the inside of the heart. Nine is the little stoop, little step. You'll see it right there. Ten is the door. Eleven is windows. Twelve is the post on the mailbox. Thirteen is the mailbox. Fourteen and fifteen are the letters. And I didn't realize there was supposed to be something ironed in here. I didn't do it. I just did sure. I just did the stitching around it. I didn't realize that there that was to be have like a black dark clean. I just did black stitching, but it looks fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what, what are we on? That was 15. Let's, let's show them this stitch here that you did. This satin I stitch. I did a satin stitch. Let's zoom in on that to show them that mailbox. Yeah, I did a satin stitch and I just came around and caught the edge of the valentine. It's almost got it there. There we go. And then I just did went here and there because that's like the floor of the mailbox. So the satin stitch starts right up here. Mm-hmm. I'll let you trace it around yep, there, so it just starts there. Black, and it just comes around. And what stitch width did you use to do that? Do you remember? Oh, I'd have to say that's about a 2 or a 2.5. And that was it's, that was Q25, which was yes, satin Q25 stitch. Yes, Q25 is satin stitch. And test it. Test it. If you're, if you're doing this for the first time, test out that stitch on a piece of fabric and see how it looks and lines up, and, that, and then do it on your project. And that that's, is what's called the applique stitch because it's not just a zigzag. Did you know that? No, that's right. It's like a... The applique stitch stitches a stitch this way, then at an angle, then straight, and then at an angle. So whenever you go around a curve, your stitches don't open up. Q25. 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 Okay. And then we were on number 16. So, okay. pot, so number five is pot before the plant, because what you want to do is you want to put your... Oh, let me pot, pot exactly where you want it. Bit. Pot where you want it. And oh, then you mentioned today? something about... Then I... I here and here? Yeah, there before I before I ironed it down, I slid the tree under it to place the tree where I wanted it. So you put your pot down, leave the top open, and I, then put your plant yeah. down and tuck it underneath mm -hmm. where you want it yes. to be. And then, then your heart's on top. Okay? Now we're to number 16. Mm -hmm. That's the bunny. 17 is his little neckerchief. Can I straighten Because my dad would bit? call it. My dad would call that a neckerchief. Neckerchief. <laughs> 18 was the inside of his little ear. You saw me sew that. 19 is the, is the post on the flag, on the mailbox. 20 is the flag. 21 is the bird. 22 is the wing. Mm -hmm. And then I just put these hearts down anytime because they don't interfere with anything. Mm -hmm. You can iron them down first, last, whatever you want to do. Let's get a clean shot of them. So if you so want to do your I screenshot, better. we're going to keep our hands away. And okay. we're just going to say, let you. Just like the hearts on the Valentines, too. They can go on anytime. Well, I will put this in the, the it will be on our website in the product description. Uh, if your screenshot, you don't like the way it turns out, if you, if you something like that, but that, uh, if you don't know how to do a screenshot, it's okay. We'll, we'll put it on the website too for you guys. Oh, we will. Okay. I can, I can, I can do it. That <laughs> All right, yeah. I can do it. So, um, oh, do you want to talk about the cruise? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, if so you haven't heard. too much information. Oh, we'll just keep going. We're, so it's, we have seven minutes till five o'clock, so we might All as well right. just keep going. Might so, well. if you haven't already heard, March of 2025, we are doing two cruises back to back. Uh, it's going to be exciting. So we have a bunch of plans in preparation, um, but right now we are taking refundable $250 deposits on your cruise class kit. So um, the days that we are going are um, March 2nd through the 8th is the first uh, the first set. So up here, um, and it's a six night. Western Caribbean cruise. We leave out of Fort Lauderdale. We, um, we're all arriving the day before, and we're gonna have a, a group hotel available uh, for anyone that wants to get in the day before. It's too stressful to try to get in the day of the cruise with how early we leave. We like to get in the day before. Um, 
we uh, will be all be at the hotel. There'll be a shuttle bus that takes us over to the port that you guys will be able to take part of. Uh, and then it's kind of nice to just hang out and be in the hotel. We'll be down, kind of down in the lobby and stuff and stuff like that ahead of time. And then uh, that sixth day with the projects that we have planned, um, you have to book your rooms through Karen. She's our travel agent. Her email address is down here at the bottom. It's Karen at you've arrived.com with a little hyphen uh, in between you've and arrived. Uh, you email her. That email is also in the description. I'm going to put it together uh, an email out to, to announce this with some more details and things. So the first were March 2nd through the 8th of 2025. Now that's that's pretty much the same. No, we, we didn't go to Jamaica last time. So no, this is different. I honestly don't remember where we went. Well, we went to Labadee and we, we went to Coco Cay. I remember but, Coco Cay, but yeah. Now, but now we're going to go to Jamaica. Okay, that's a little different than last time. Uh, then the second option is March 8th through the 16th. This is a Eastern Caribbean cruise. This one's eight nights. And we go to the various ports. This one leaves out of Fort Lauderdale as well. And uh, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We, uh, we have really great projects planned for you guys. Um, we've ordered fabric. We had to order the fabric now for it to be in in time with it being this type of fabric. I did have the... Uh, pictures of the fabric we're using. But and one I'm, of the coolest things on the ship is the robotic bar. The robotic bar, that's cool. You yeah. go in and you say what kind of drink you want and all of a sudden these this, these arms go around, they grab the bottle of Jack Daniels, they take it over, they pour it, they bring it and, it, cool. and it's, it's, it goes all around. And They look like people? No, 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 it's just um, all these bottles of liquor oh, it's like and it, it just goes around and grabs thing? them and it's just arms that go around just and arms, grab them. Yeah, just robotic arms, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, so you want to be there with us. That it's going to be a great time. We're going to have top of the line machines. Uh, classes are going to be 12 people per class. In one classroom, we're going to have two instructors, hopefully, in each class. There'll be a hopefully. morning session. <laughs> I was one last year. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because my parents forgot their passports. Yes. Silly them. His, they, mo his mom was supposed to be my helper. They drove from Kansas to Florida, and they forgot their passports. Both of them did. So, oh, well. But that's, yeah. So, but don't forget your passport. So, um this uh, two people or two instructors in each class, 12 people per class. We're going to have three classrooms, uh, morning session, afternoon session. So you have uh, a lot of help. Uh, we, we design projects that you'll finish um, on the cruise that day. You don't, you don't take any unfinished projects home. That's not what we want because we know you, you don't get them done. So yep. Will uh, there be a meet day before the second cruise? There we will be, yes. We're going we're gonna to somehow arrange that too. But we won't be in the hotel. We I think that's what they're be, talking about. But we're going to have hotel arrangements available with okay. the shuttle van and everything for the second cruise uh, for you guys to all do that, too. We're kind of coordinate who's going to be the And then, uh, and then the, the, the first that. night on the cruise after dinner, we have, it's not a cocktail party, but we have a get-together with, like, you know, soft drinks. You can and bring a cocktail if you want to. Soft yes, drinks and I'm coffee. And yeah. yeah, it's like, so, a, it's like a, um, a meet, meet and, and greet. greet. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be getting the room set up that first day and getting everything, and we'll start diving in the second day and stuff like that. And if you want to bring your husband, the husband's... Buddy up, you know. So last time we did the cruise, we took 60 people, 60 sewers, 60 ladies sewing. But there were, how many people in our group? There was like 120 people in our group because people, maybe more than that, I think, 140 people in our group because people brought friends and spouses mm -hmm. and family members and things like that. So you'll be sewing part of the day, but you're going to have a lot of time to spend with your family. I think my sister and Hick, her kids are coming. Uh, I think my parents are going to come. I think some other people come. So definitely make it a family thing. That we've, and we're going to, if you want to eat dinner together, we're going to eat dinner together. If you don't, if your roommate wants to go to sleep or tired and you want something to do, we're going to go to shows together and stuff. So we, it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, Last year, Keith went and he helped set up all the machines, helped tear down the machines. He was the guy in the hallway that was putting the little snaps in the, in the Kimberbell projects. And so then he didn't have too much to do the rest of the day. And he was going around meeting all these husbands. And one of them was so interesting. He was a private, a pilot for some private airline, and he'd mm. flown John Travolta and oh, all cool. this kind of stuff. So Keith's telling me, Leonard, see that guy over there? He did this. See that guy? He went around and he met all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Keith is our social uh, Yeah, so yeah, don't think if you bring your husband along, there won't be anything for him to do. There'll be plenty. Yes, there is single rooms available. There are tripper rooms available. Just email Karen. I know uh, Karen was at a conference until the 24th. She uh, will get back to you in the email about the details and things like that. So email her at karen at you've arrived dot com and she'll get you all set up. Is, so are Frost Hill finishing kits still available? Yes, they are. Okay. Frost Hill finishing kits are still available. If you go to the search bar wherever you are, or you're on the where you're on the 
you're on the website. So go to the search bar, maybe just type in finishing kit or frost hill, it'll pop up and we do have them available for you. So someone asked if we have to tip the robot. Do you have to tip the robot? <laughs> no. You don't. And uh -huh. you know, I worked in I worked in maintenance all my life and I'm a journeyman electrician. So I said to the guy that was running it, I said, Can I go back and see all the controls? He said, Sure, he took me back and let me oh, see really? all the controls. Yeah. yeah. So is he going to be grilling hot dogs? Uh, <laughs> probably not. They, no, no, they confiscate our the iron. Yeah. So if he's if they're going to they're going to confiscate his hot dog grill too. But uh, um, Ruth Ann, we don't know who's been on both cruises. I know. I think I'm going for both. Gloria will be going for both. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably do both. Yeah. As long so, as yeah. we have somebody to watch our cat. Yeah. So. <laughs> anything else to show today? I think that's it. Well, we thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. We have so much fun doing this. Uh, today was a crazy day here. Uh, a lot of stuff went on. Gloria and Joni, they didn't get to go on their trip just yet. Uh, their flight was canceled, but they're going out tomorrow. I just feel like those things happen to Gloria all too often. She's yes. just one of those people that just gets those weird things that happens to her. So that's unfortunate. But they'll be headed out tomorrow. So uh, we have tomorrow is Wednesday, Kimberbell Wednesday. Uh, Kathy won't be here, but Kathleen is going to be here. Uh, to do the lesson with us. I'm going to be here as well, and so is Ruth Ann. Uh, Kathy's husband had a knee replacement, so she I is have home to text her, yeah. uh, making sure he's uh, not walking on his new knee or something. So, <laughs> so I think we'll... Yeah, he uh, just had it today. Yeah, he just had it today. Yeah. So, all right, I think that's it. That's so, it. Okay. Thank okay. you so much, guys. Thank you. We will see you tomorrow. All righty.